Hey again, and welcome back. Today we're taking another look at this uh, triple five timer PWM circuit. Um, because I just been playing with it a little bit, and uh, I think I have a couple ways to improve this before we move on to the next step of making it a little bit more permanent. So first things first, I am going to bring up the scope trace right here. And let's see if we can connect this and see what we've got. So first I'm going to connect the ground to this yellow wire and then the trigger to here. I'm just going to hit auto on the scope. Love this feature. And then I'm just going to drag it down a little bit so we can see a little bit more of the waveform. And OK. So you see these variations here, it kind of goes up and down a little bit. Well, I tried to solve that with uh, this 10 nanofarad um, capacitor, ceramic capacitor across the rail. But I have a much bigger capacitor here. This is a uh, 2200 microfarad, 16 volt capacitor. The voltage is a bit low considering we're running 12 volts. But uh, I'm going to put that across and we'll just see the result here. So if you see the fluctuations, there we go. It is a lot more stable. So I have a really big capacitor here working as a sort of like a local reserve. So I don't know if I'm going to put that big of a capacitor in the final version of it. But you can see how it's much calmer now. And another thing is that you remember I told you to put a 200 ohm resistor here if you're going to use a 10k pot. Well, I think I take it back at this point. Uh, I didn't realize that that 200 ohm resistor running across a 12 volt rail would get pretty damn hot, and it did. It was probably within its uh, quarter watt capability, but it was getting hot. So when I shrink this down. I'm definitely not going to dissipate that much heat through a surface mount component, so I'm going to keep this as a fairly low frequency device. So use a 50k here and a um, 1k ohm up here, and I think it'll be uh, obviously we're lacking the um, high frequency, but at least it'll be stable and none of the components will get too hot. Now, if I zoom into the waveform here, you see we still have this little bit of overshoot here. And apparently this is um, part and parcel of the triple five timer. If you look down here, uh, that's our three number three output pin. And then we have right beside it a uh, power. You can put you know 12 volt rail you can put a 10 nanofarad capacitor here and you'll notice that that spike goes way lower however if I zoom into it you see that ramp here how long it takes to actually get up to uh, turn on to, uh, how long it takes for it to actually trigger well let me take that cap out and see what the difference is Notice how now it is way cleaner of an edge. Considering that some devices need a very clean triggering edge, I think it's best just to deal with the little bit of spike that's in there and simply leave this as is. I don't think it's worth slowing down the, the spike that much or slowing down the, the, um, the vertical edge that much. Another thing that some tutorials said was to try to load it down with a resistor. I got a 10K here, and it just makes this weird hump here. So yeah, it plateaus here, but it's still spiked up. And our volts peak to peak is 12.5, and if I remove it, it's 12.5. So there's not too much that you can do to actually fix this. It is part and parcel of the triple five timer but I believe for most of our devices I don't think that little inductive kick will be all that bad 
Uh, you can also try to put this uh, 10 nano across the power rail and uh, again it doesn't do too much see on off on off so again this little spike here up here we'll just have to deal with and there's even one on the falling edge if I can move this you see there's a little guy down down there but again there's nothing we can do about this or nothing much I should say nothing worth investing that much time if you have a solution for this that's really quick put it in the description and I might give it a shot but I think for now the circuit will live like this so 50k pot a uh, 1k resistor between 8 and 7 and uh, I think we're going to deal with the frequency now in order to drive something reasonably sized like this DC motor is this is a small motor it doesn't draw very much current but you can't drive this directly from the triple five timer as the diagram shows uh, in the previous video so this is actually not all that great to do anything other than supply a clock signal to other logic components. So in order to actually use our PWM controller, we need to have a way to output that PWM signal. In comes a MOSFET. This one's a fairly cheap one, uh, 30N06L, sorry, FQP. 30N06L. It's a logic level MOSFET. I believe these were about a dollar each, something like that. And even the guys who are running the Arduino PWM generators will need some sort of strong or high current semiconductor. This one here can go up to 60 volts and I believe a continuous 22 amps. And I'm going to show you that it's very simple to attach this to our circuit. So I'm just going to plop it down here. Um, now we have gate, drain, and source in that order. Gate, drain, and source. So our signal here will go directly onto the gate. And then I'm just going to grab the probe and pop it onto the uh, drain. The source will just go to ground. So I have this little link here, tiny little link. Pop that into there. And now, I don't know if uh, this is showing very well. I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna put it right into the gate for now. There we go. So here we're looking at the gate signal just going to shrink this down a little bit. Maybe I'll pop this in and go down a tiny bit. There we go. So don't forget that a MOSFET has a bit of capacitance. So that's what you see here. And it's good practice to tie a capacitor or a capacitance on the gate to ground. So we make sure that when we're booting up the circuit or just normally the circuit is off so I have a 10k resistor here put the 10k to the ground and you see we have these little bits of voltage spikes here which again not much we can do about it I'm just gonna have to deal with it um, and just to show you that adding a capacitor to that does not really help things just shove a capacitor in there see on off on off it doesn't do too much to help even we can try the the capacitor here on the output on you know it helps a little bit but not too much and again what we're doing is we're actually slowing down the trigger time the amount of time it takes to actually rise sorry the rise time of that signal. Okay, so next thing to do now is to hook up our load. Now in the independent version of the circuit um, there will be just uh, pads basically, either pads or screw terminals, 
but for this we want to put 12 volts onto our motor. So I'm just going to jam that into the 12 volt connection. Okay, and now I want to hook up the negative to the drain, and our signal is going to move the is going to you know connect the drain to the source, and we should get a motor running. There we go. This motor is running now, and it should be running at. Uh, roughly 50% duty cycle and I can twist the pot clockwise to make it go faster because you look the we're almost always in on time even if we zoom in here we've got a little bit of off time there and I can switch the pot counterclockwise to get it down to the point where it's nearly not moving at all. And if you look here, our off time, our on time is only about, I don't know, 15% or less compared to the on time, uh, off time. So this is effectively PWM speed controlling of a simple DC load. And so I believe in this form, this circuit is pretty much ready to go to something like a perf board for a little bit more permanent installation. Um, it's not good to try to pull too much current out of a breadboard. The breadboard connections are simply not made to handle it. So we won't know the limits of our MOSFET yet. We need to push it a little bit harder when it, it's more in a permanent location. But these are our improvements for this circuit, and I think it's ready to be permanentized. So the next step will be perf board, and then the step after that will be um, keycad miniaturization and having PCBs made. Hope you enjoyed this video, and once again, thanks for watching.